In this video, we're going to learn to make a movie in Pymol. So you might be asking, why would I want to do that? Well, you could be that person with an impressive video embedded in your PowerPoint with your protein that you're working on spinning behind you and zooming the active site. And wouldn't that be pretty cool? Okay, let's begin. We're going to use the work that we did in the videos uh, where we created scenes and where we created labels. So if you'd like to work along with me, which I recommend, run through those two tutorials and so we're right about here. Okay, scenes are going to enable you to make a movie really, really well. When I left off, I had actually, I had something else stored as scene five and then I repositioned this. So I want to actually make this scene five, but I've already stored scene five. Well, if we're typing commands, we actually can update our scenes really, really easily. So I'm just going to type scene five, comma, update. And now this is what's stored here as scene five. Let's just double check. We'll click to scene four, click back to scene five. Beautiful. That's exactly what I wanted. So we can update our scenes as we go. Now you might have noticed when I click back to scene four, my ligands changed color because I was using magenta at the time and then I changed my mind. No problem. Let's go ahead and update that. We have a selection for our ligands over here. We'll go to ligands, color by element and choose white for our ligands. So now they're recolored. Let's click into this area right here, the command line. And we want to store this as scene four. So we're going to update the previous scene four that we had. Okay, now we have scene five, which zooms in our, on our interactions with the phosphate group here. Scene four and our ligands are colored the same color, so our movie's gonna look pretty good. Let's check on scene three. Okay, and we can see here, our ligand uh, was colored blue, the co color of the protein at the time. So we can just go ahead to ligands, color by element, pick our color. Oops, not yellow. There's that white. And now click in the command line, click the up arrow, and we can quickly just change this to scene three. Same command comes through. So we're using the arrow keys, remember, to toggle through those commands there. Now let's go back and see what we had for scene two. Okay, our ligands were green, so let's go ahead and color our ligands again by element and change them to the white. But we had other ligands shown. So all I want is to show these ligands. So I'm going to click on them. These little lights light up in the sequence. I'm going to scroll over till I'm within them and I want to see all the ligands so I can see here. So these three were the ones that were important to me. And this just makes the protein a little bit busy. I, they're here in the structure, but I just don't want to show them right now because I want the viewer to be focusing on this active site. So it looks like these are the things that I don't need here. So starting with this magnesium, this ADP is important, so skip that one. So first of all, just click away. And now we're gonna make a new selection. We don't wanna to add to the selection of our good ligands, so we're just going to go like this, and I can drag and select all of these. And I can make a selection out of this right now. I just wanna hide everything, so I'm gonna hide everything. And now we only see the little stick ligand in that active site, and that'll look pretty good for our movie. So let's store this. Use the up arrow key. We don't wanna store this as scene three. We're gonna store it as scene two and update. So let's just check by clicking through. We had scene one as well, that was the rainbow. I don't think we'll use that in this one. We'll just stick to this. Two, zooms in a little bit, adds the water and zooms a little bit more. And then scene five, zooms in on our interactions with the phosphate, which maybe we wanna highlight. So we're gonna put those elements together in a movie. And we're gonna start with scene two, so I can just click on that and get that centered. My vision for this movie is we're going to have our protein here. It's going to spin around and then we're going to zoom through scene three and four, get all the way to scene five. 
and then this is going to do a slow turn and then we'll zoom back out all the way so we have our protein in frame again because if we wanted to loop our movie we might want it to smoothly transition right to where it started so we will start and end on scene two okay let's make a 20 second movie Pymol makes movies at 30 frames per second, pretty standard. So 20 times 30, we need 600 frames in our movie. The magic command that we type to make a movie is mset, M-S-E-T. And we want our movie to range from frame one, a little X, all the way to frame 600. And that sets up our movie. Now down here you see the word camera, so we're going to get a timeline for a movie building down here. Okay, now we want to store the views along our timeline for our movie. And so the command to do that is mViewStore, and this is where we're going to start. So we want this to be the mView that we store at frame 1. And watch at the bottom when I do this you'll see the little line comes up now. So that line is going to have little breaks on it where we're, we're doing little clips in our movie. So let's say I want this to spin around for about 200 frames. This is the scene I'm going to want to end on because I'm going to do just a 360 turning on the Y axis. So I'm going to go ahead and use my arrow key and we're going to also store this at frame 200. Now, if I want this to spin evenly and smoothly over 200 frames, I can always like click on this and drag it around to wherever I wanted it and then store that view, that's fine. I'm gonna go straight back to, oops, uh, the, the second scene here. I want it to turn really smoothly. So what I'm gonna do is use another command, turn Y 180 degrees. You could do this in the X direction if you want, no problem. And so I'm going to execute that, and it turns my protein perfectly. Now, I want to store this midway between here. So I had stored the um, um, just scene 2 in its original form. I had stored it at 0 and 200. So let me store the Y turn at 100. So using my arrow keys, and I can just fix this one to the, the where I want to store it. So you can do this really quite quickly. Now you can see another little band popped up right here and that's where we stored this view. So now we can type M play just to see how our movie is doing. And that'll show us our movie. It spins, it comes back around and then we don't have anything else so it's going to do nothing for a while. So let's go ahead and hit M stop. So we're stopping playing our movie and I think we can type frame one and go all the way back to frame one if we wanted to basically rewind. So we have this spinning till frame 200 and then we want to pan gently to this scene three here. And so I am going to store scene three at, oh, let's say 300. So I'm on this view so I can just go back to one of my old MView stores and make that 300. So it'll slowly pan between here and here to this um, scene. And I can also, I'm just gonna play it for a second, stop it now, and then I can take this little guy and drag it with my cursor. So if I wanna just take a quick view, okay, that's working right. Great, that's exactly what I wanted to happen. So you can kind of preview as you go without watching the entire movie every time, which is really good if you're making a long movie. Okay, now we want to pan to scene four. So scene four adds in our waters and turns the structure slight, slightly. I'm going to find one of my MView stores and let's store this at 350. Okay, the final thing I wanted to do was go to my phosphate interactions that I'd shown. So I'm gonna click on scene five and store that basically the way that Pymol smoothly pan, that's what I'm gonna be uh, seeing in my movie as well. So let's store this at 400. And we'll see right around here, another little thing come up, there it is. So we've stored this here. And now let's say we want to spin this around almost until the end of our movie, but then we want our movie to zoom back out to scene two. 
So let's plan to spin from 400 to frame 550. So now we can, we've stored this already at 400. And so we want to end here at 550 so we can just store this again. Let's do our good old turn Y 180 command to get exactly where we want. And again, you could do this manually. You could move to wherever you wanted over, over the time period. You know, you could have it spin very slowly for the first half and speed up. But I like to just have a very, very uniform spin. So halfway between four, frames 400 and 550 is going to be 475. So let's store this at 475. And then I said at the end of our movie, we wanted to come back to um, scene two because that's where we started in case we want to loop this. So let's just go ahead and do that. And we'll store this as the last frame. All right, um, so let's go to frame one. And so that just took our cursor all the way back so we could play our movie from the beginning. And here we go. So we have our spin. The spin is finishing. Now we're going to zoom in on our scene three. And you can see the scenes light up as they're changing too. Ooh, it zooms over. That's kind of fast. Maybe you want to slow that down after you watch it. That'd be fine. So you just have to make a longer movie. Zooms all the way back out. And now we're just looping. And so it's spinning again. Now we're ready to export our movie. So maybe you want to embed it into PowerPoint. So we can go to File. Export movie as, and you may have any of these options uh, highlighted. Some of the free versions, I don't know if they could do the MPEG in QuickTime. Um, if you export this as PNG images, you'll need something that puts those images back together in a movie later. Um, so you'll just get a file uh, folder with a lot of images in it. But I like to save it as an MPEG, so here we go. It'll ask me um, if I want to do any of these commands. I tried to ray this before and make very beautiful structures and my computer hung up forever. So I just always do the draw and then you can save the movie as wherever you want it. So we'll just save that and you can watch it as it goes through and it'll be saving it. You can close this window at this time. So I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about how to make a movie in Pymole with me. I hope you find it useful and maybe make a beautiful presentation with this someday. And uh, if you want to learn more about Pymole, chemistry and biochemistry, um, like this video, subscribe to my channel.